Go with Fnatic are going to ban Elise now and let Lee Sin through. Maybe try first pick that. We'll see how this pans out. But as is, as we've said so far, Yellowstar and Nif, they spoke very heavily about that Annie and the Leona matchup. And Alliance are much more afraid of Yellowstar's Annie than of any other right now. And they actually ban out Yasuo here, Fnatic, as their final ban. And that's it. Again, we talk about Elise because it stands here in this point as well. Do Alliance ban out Elise or do they let it go through with a risk then? Ah, there it is, the ban. Elise taken away. I'm almost expecting... Wow, okay. Uh, so, very quickly, Yasuo has been banned five times against Alliance. Froggen has obviously been playing it a lot in, in solo queue. And I was very surprised by this LeBlanc pick because I thought the safe pick or safe option would be Lee Sin or Thresh. That way, allowing yourself to be comfortable. The one thing that LeBlanc does very well, she counters basically every single assassin. Because of the mobility she's got, and the silence, and the immense burst at six, she's a great counter to those all-in assassin types. Which, for me, against any other team would be okay, but this is Alliance. This is Froggen we're talking about, who plays more of those standard mid laners. Just to go back quickly, we've seen once already this season that LeBlanc has been with Xpeke. That was in their win against Millennium 656. Not incredibly impressive statistics with that one, but he gets it nonetheless this time around. On the other side, we talked about the junglers and where they're gonna go. Currently hovering over that Pantheon, but to touch on the Trundle, Wicked has been going for it fairly regularly this season. Yeah, Wicked's Trundle has actually been his most impressive champion, I think. You know, he played fairly well in Shivana back in week two, and I, and I think his Renekton is still pretty strong. But the, the performance that has impressed me the most has been on his Trundle. Pantheon is a surprising one for me, because with Lee Sin being available, I would have expected Shook to have gone for that. But it's not 100% certain that it's going to be in the jungle. It has been used there six times, it's been mid twice. It's not exactly a champion I associate with Froggen. But to have that versatility, to have that option available, is quite nice for the side of Alliance. So, Caitlyn in there as well for Fnatic. And, you know, the AD carries these days, we can see there the pick and uh, win rates for Caitlyn on your screens. The fact is that the AD carries, we're seeing Caitlyn, Jinx, Lucian pretty much exclusively. Obviously, we have seen a little bit of Ezreal here and there as well, but they're basically what they're fighting over at this point. So, Caitlyn in for Fnatic, now over to Alliance. I'm really intrigued to see what Froggen is actually going to bring to the table of this one. We can see that Leona has been hovered over as well, which would be very interesting if they pick Leona up right now with Thresh still on the table. If I'm honest with you, I almost anticipate Alliance to go for the Orianna pick. Froggen has tended to play safe. He, he, does, he seldom goes for those all-in champions. He seldom goes for the super unique picks. We've seen him playing Kale last week to you know, not very good success. And an Orianna would actually supplement the rest of the team. Pantheon, Trundle, and Lucian have got a lot of damage. The engage potential is very strong with them. So I'm, I'm almost expecting that from Alliance. But the one thing that Fnatic haven't revealed just yet is who they're gonna go for for the support. And like you said, with Thresh being available, Thresh is a very strong champion against Leona in lane. Wow. Um, <laughs> okay, so. We talked about double AP last time. We currently have Morgana and Orianna on the board for Fnatic. I don't expect it. Yellowstar hovers over a lot of champions before changing in the last seconds to this one. But will they go for that Orianna to take that away from Alliance? Because I, I feel like Alliance, and Froggen in particular, it's Orianna, Gragas, basically. That has been his fall back to champions. But if they take the Orianna away, they've picked up Thresh here as the support. So against that Leona, and they do lock in the Orianna, so it's gonna be that double AD AP comp again. It definitely is. And I don't know where the LeBlanc's gonna go, whether that's gonna be top lane or whether that's gonna be in the mid lane. I almost think it's gonna be LeBlanc top because I think that'll do pretty well against Trinal. Can silence him, can get in his face. The root is gonna prevent Trinal from chasing you down in lane. But I'm not sure where Fnatic wanna go though. This is the second time they've run double AP. They did it last week against Gambit and it didn't work. They lost that game. I really want to stress that right now. If Trundle gets far enough ahead that he's, he can survive the burst of that LeBlanc or Orianna, I'm a little bit scared for Fnatic because if they pop some abilities on him or if they can't prevent him getting to the back line, then Wicked could do a lot of work against this Fnatic comp right now. We should also not forget that Pantheon can go into that mid lane. We've already seen it twice this season, six times in the jungle, so that's not out of the question here. If Alliance go for something a little bit different, but it looks like it's going to be falling back onto that old stalwart pick for uh, Froggen with the Gragas. Alliance needed wave clear desperately. With the melee champions of Trundle, Pantheon and Leona, if they ever get sieged upon, 
because there's a Caitlyn sitting there, it's going to be very difficult for them to hold onto towers. So the Ziggs or the Gragas would probably have been the best pick in that scenario. It allows them to defend. It also allows them to set up some sieges for themselves if they want to go in. So Gragas, like we've already said, it is one of the champions that Froggen has been defaulting to. It does well enough against either LeBlanc or the Orion in lane can farm fairly safely. So I quite like that pickup from Alliance. And I think... They've been struggling with so far, Alliance, but you guys have heard from us, so let's check in and see what you think will come out on top here. According to the votes on lilysports.com, 90% of you have Fnatic down as the winner. 90% is a lot, but it's also... There. The one thing a Fnatic cannot afford to do is push their waves. The closer that Shook gets to level 6, the more likely we are to see a Grand Skyfall gank coming into effect. So I think Fnatic have to be very careful with controlling the tempo of their lanes. One thing they have in their favor on that one, though, is if it is going to be, obviously, Oriana in the mid lane, the shortest lane, he's going to be able to escape from that most likely. Top lane, you've got LeBlanc, who is so incredibly mobile, it's going to be hard to lock him down. Yeah, and I also expect, because of the, the lane matchup in the early game to be a little in favor of Fnatic, that Shook should send some ganks or some attention to that bottom lane. So here we go then, in-game Fnatic versus Alliance, first versus eighth in the LCS Spring Split of 2014. And Alliance, as we said before, they improved in week two after a disastrous week one, but they seem to default back to the week one style when they turned up last week to play. And it's anyone's guess who's going to come here today and play. Yeah, we'll have to see which team actually does appear. Alliance have got a lot of things that can go well for them. However, they need to, they need to stay even in lane. You know, the reason they lost their games last week, I think the reason SK in particular really just grabbed hold of the matchup is because Alliance fell behind on an individual level. And they can't afford to do that here today against Fnatic because Fnatic are arguably superior to SK at rotating in the mid game and closing the games out. So looking at level one here seems pretty standard. In fact, everyone in their respective positions kind of matching up here. If you look at those lines across the map, so as in the top lane currently waiting there, Wicked is on the same side of the map. Both AD carries and support on the bottom side with the mid laners looking at each other in the eyes in that mid lane. Even the junglers are up at the same position. So looks like we're going to have a fairly Defensive level one as Peke catches the first barrel of the game. Points Ad for that. Advantage Alliance. They have the, the <laughs> effective HP lead, as it were. But I think, you know, I, I, 
I think it's a smart choice here for these teams to go for the standard lanes, so to speak. The fact that Fnatic have got two sweepers on is also very defensive. They've killed both of the wards, actually. I think Cyanide as well as Pekka got some auto attacks down. So vision advantage is in favor of Fnatic right now. That's a very interesting start as well. Something that we've not really seen. For me, that just points to pure research from Fnatic's side, knowing where those wards are going to go down. And look at this, an early invade coming on. Wicked is going to spot Soaz as they go into their first damage. Coming down from this as the wards get placed in Soaz at half HP. Wicked actually takes the cue from Cyanide, who himself is falling low. He's going to have to flash away, and Soaz is going to have to do the same here. And in the end, using his spells to escape from that, keeps his flash for a little bit later on, but that was not the start that Fnatic were looking for. Definitely not. I think Fnatic maybe overestimated their early game strength in terms of those champions, and the fact that Soa has basically face-checked the Trundle, he got auto-attacked, he got chomped, he couldn't trade evenly because his auto-attack damage had been reduced. So yep. I think uh, a you know, very good play for Alliance to respond. All of their team members got nice and tightly grouped, and Fnatic a little overconfident. That was a brave invade with only two members. And it looks like actually uh, could be a problem with one of uh, the Fnatic players at this point. I see the admins were stood behind them from that. It seems actually to be a Reckless who has uh, just left the game and I'm sure going to be restarting in here to get himself back in and uh, keep this one going. But you know, these kind of early problems, I mean, Reckless for me is, is only 17, but he's He's so experienced now. Obviously, he couldn't play in the LCS last year, but he played with Fnatic before that when he was even younger. So he's got the experience of this one. Four weeks now he's been playing here on the stage in the LCS. I don't think he's a player that gets particularly phased from what we've seen. No, definitely not. I mean, when he burst into the scene at DreamHack Winter about two years ago, following that went to IPL5 with the team, has spent all of last year being groomed by Fnatic. He's been to the different lands. He played competitively yeah. with the Copenhagen Wolves all year long on big stages across Europe. So it's, this isn't going to fluster him at all. And I think more impressively, Reckless has really lived up to the hype. I think there are very few individual players who have maybe lived up to the performances you're expecting and actually outshone them. It took, I think, four or five games for Reckless to give up his first death yeah. in the LCS. And he's doing phenomenal right now as this... The phenom AD carry, I think we've called him a few ah, times. And we should look at the other side of the coin to that one. Shook was massively hyped coming yeah. into the start of this season. Massively. I think that can't be underestimated. And he's not lived up to that one. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's the pressure of being so heavily hyped that's really got to him. That and the fact that every single team they've played against has said, we don't want you to play that. We don't want you to play that. This game alone, Wukong was taken away. We talked about how... They may have been looking for new champions to play, and Wukong was removed. And we see Shook playing Pantheon, which is the current sort of trending junglers across both sides of the pond in the LCS. Yep, and starting off with that red buff that did come under a little bit of pressure early on. Actually, we did see him uh, just smiting that one out. Wicked also had to recall, but he's got teleport, so he's coming straight back into this top lane where he is going to be facing up with LeBlanc. Definitely not a lane that we used to see in LeBlanc versus Trundle. No, definitely not. And I, I want to see how Soaz handles these first levels where I feel the fact that he's ranged and got the ability to keep Trundle where he wants him is going to play in Soaz's favor. The one thing we haven't necessarily touched on is the immense mobility of Fnatic. You've got, you know, the distortion on Soaz. You've got Cyanide Leeson that can hop, skip, and jump everywhere. Peke has got a speed up. Thresh can throw himself around. When these team fights happen, Fnatic are going to be able to kite and dodge and avoid a lot of the barrels and the culling and the Pantheon damage from his Heartseeker Strike fairly efficiently. Going to be a very interesting one from this one. We've just had tabs on both of the junglers. Speaking of tabs, down in this bottom lane, that wave pushed up to his turret already. We saw Yellow Star zoning both of them out very early on in this lane matchup. And look at the CS advantage already. That's well, pretty huge. When you pick a Caitlyn in lane, you want to win the lane. She's got the longest range of the AD carries with a headshot passive. You have the ability to get an HP advantage and a damage advantage very early on. In addition to that, Thresh beats, Lucian in, uh, Thresh beats Leona in the early stages as well. The fact that Yellowstar's got the sweeping lanes as opposed to a ward, though, I think if we're going to keep pushing the lane, it's going to become exponentially more risky because they don't have the amount of vision they need to protect against a Shook gank. So we'll have to see if Alliance can punish that decision. 
And we can see that a lot of wards cleared out on this early stage of the game by Yellowstar, who went with that sweeping lens for his uh, trinket early on. Mid lane, we should talk about that as well. Peke versus Frog and an old classic. Um, and, well, Oriana versus Gragas. Just as classic as Wicked actually going to go on towards Soaz here. Will take a bit of damage for his pleasure. Yeah, and that's basically the fact that LeBlanc's got range, got the root, got the silence. Wicked can't offer a whole lot, so he <laughs> really just wants to back off. And maybe he's baiting Wicked to take some more damage. Uh, you know, in the mid lane, Oriana versus Dragas, I think it is going to be a very big farm fest into level 6. At level 6, there is the potential to kill your, your opponent, but realistically, we're expecting Peck and Frogger to default to Season 2, farm up the lane, wait for jungle presence to help secure kills, because I don't think that Froggen is going to make a misstep or a misplay to get caught out. This bottom lane continues to trend in favor of Fnatic. 37 to 24 CS currently. Reckless and Yellow start doing a fantastic job of controlling this lane out currently. And Reckless not really missing any CS that comes this way. Don't expect Tabs to have too much, uh, too many problems underneath the tower of doing exactly the same here. But you can see that Nif coming out just to assist in that CS. It is actually losing a bit as he goes in on towards Yellow Star Tabs. Gonna get some damage off the hook actually just flying by there. No real action. Though. Yeah, pretty even trade. The Dark Passage from Yellow Star blocking some of that auto attack damage from Tabs. And it's great to see in that intro video how Yellow Star was saying, hey, Nif doesn't really scare me with that Leona. He's playing Leona. And Nif's saying, hey, well, we both play Thresh. And you know, we talked about how important the support picks were, and they both got very powerful champions that can make plays happen. Shook. Gonna try jump on Peke, but Froggen is a mile away. It's gonna take some time for him to get there. Yeah, we do see that uh, Froggen's still level five here. Peke is already up to level six, so he's got that shockwave should he actually need it. And we are gonna see them going in on towards this bottom lane. Yellow Star down below half HP, but Reckless has damage coming in there will force Alliance to back away. Yeah, that was a great play. Now they've got a lot of damage onto Yellow Star. We talked about how Fnatic do not have the required vision to stay pushed up. Yellow Star senses they've been there a little too long. He's trying to get Reckless backwards, and that could have gone very scary if they'd stuck around another five or 10 seconds. That is a good read though from Fnatic to start backing away. Shook already making his move down towards that tri-bush, and now they've got a ward less technically down in that bottom side as well. For the fact that he has gone for that sweeping lens, be interested if, he, if and how he changes that as the game progresses. Shook just came over towards the Wraiths actually, just in time for Peke's ball to come flying through. Spot him out, and he decides to back away. Better safe than sorry there. Yeah, Fnatic have been aware of Shook's positioning. They pinged him out. I see there's some wards at the top half of the jungle there. So Shook trying to come in behind Reckless and Yellowstar actually was most likely spotted out by those wards. So Fnatic doing a very good job by uh, strengthening the lack of vision in the bottom lane by supporting it in the middle lane. Having two wards up there is, is preventing them getting caught up from behind. So pretty smart decision making here from Fnatic. Seven and a half minutes, they've got a small CS lead thanks to the fact that their lanes are stronger, but Alliance are not necessarily falling too far behind yet. Not just yet. We have, as you said, that 600 gold lead. Looking at the items, Chalice for both mid laners. Actually, Pecky going in for the boots from this one, which you never know, could mean the difference between a life and death situation for him. Obviously, both mid laners still do have that flash available to them as Peke just going to get a pink ward down there in that brush. Shook onto the second spawn of his red buff. Not going to be challenged as he was at level one from that one because Cyanide is on his own red buff. Yeah, so it's a very slow start here for both of these teams. I think Alliance will be happy for this one. They want some time to scale up. They want to get tabs enough to level six in conjunction with Shook to hit six so they can have that man drop solar flare death from above type of fight. And I think with Reckless and Yellowstar, they continue to push this wave out. They've held about a 15 CS lead for most of the game, but props to Tabs, he hasn't fallen further behind. There's a large amount of minions in front of him, so he'll close this 15 to about eight or you know, six or eight as he starts to kill them out. So there, Wicked actually having a couple of problems in this top lane, had to use his subjugate on so as to try and claim some of that HP back to keep him in that lane at this point. He's to be fair to Wicked, keeping up in CS at this stage of the game though. Yeah, and in comparison to last week's uh, matches where Wicked fell behind heavily early on, going for the 1v2 first of all, and then in the second game, just that Malphite Trinity Force not working out, not to his favor. He's CSing very, very well. Shook is level six right now. And I think there's the Grand Sky for the going on Peke. They're going in for Peke, who actually flashes. He's got to the two, but a great barrel from Froggen. Peke pulled away from the tower. He goes down. 
first blood for Alliance. And that was just so well played. Even after the flash, Peke actually stalled out. He needed to flash sooner. A reply flash from Shook allowed him to get in range, use that uh, cast from Froggen, and it's very well coordinated. For the second time this game, we've seen Wicked using his teleport to go top lane. So it means it's not going to be available for a dragon fight if it breaks out. But I don't think Fnatic can even challenge for this one. Cyanide's up top, he's nowhere to be seen, and there's no one else for Fnatic to help this out. Yeah, there's no dragon fight here. The best they can hope for is a lucky <laughs> shot or hook from uh, Yellow Star. <laughs> Did land the hook, to be fair to him, but, well, in the end, that will be finished off. A lion's picking up the first dragon of the game, along with that first blood. Brilliant coordination. That was the weakness that we pointed out for Alliance. If they can continue to do that, who knows? They might be back to that week two form that we were talking of earlier. I also think that's the first time we've seen a Pantheon gank in the mid lane succeed for the first attempt. We've seen Pantheon ganks in the middle from the jungle happening several times over the last few weeks, but that was just very well coordinated. I wonder again if Becker had flashed a tiny bit earlier, if he'd reacted to the Grand Skyfall maybe sooner, he may have been able to get away. But nevertheless, the kill did go to Shook. First play was not secured for Froggen, so the lane should still stay fairly even. And if you actually look at the items, Peke having his Fiendish Codex, he's a little bit ahead as far as cooldown reduction, ability power, etc. Slightly up on that one, but Froggen, I think, is going to have a decent amount of cash. He's actually sat on about 1,700 gold for his next time that he goes home. And we talked about these two uh, players before. In fact, the players to watch, he pointed out that Peke has the highest CS in the LCS at 20 minutes. These two guys are incredible farmers and have been over the years. And they're, to be honest, playing champions that lend to that one brilliantly. So without the intervention of those junglers, we don't expect any kills to come down. But with that flash still only halfway back off cooldown for Peke, the Grand Skyfall coming up, well, in fact, it is already up. There's always a possibility for Shook to get back in. Definitely. And I think that if Froggen actually gets a good cast, he can knock uh, Peke back before he's able to distance away. Wicked taking so much damage from Soaz, and Wicked actually started that fight. He went aggressive on Soaz first, put himself in danger of getting bursted down, and did actually suffer a massive HP loss. But once again, he's keeping mostly even on CS, and Soaz is really just trying to get some more lane authority here. Uh, and he can continue to do that now. Got that Morellonomicon in there. Just want to make a point about Trinkets here because they did change. There's the Subjugate used once again by Wicked to get himself more HP in that lane. And he'll be quite happy if he can keep up and not die in that lane at all. However, Cyanide's there. Yeah, Cyanide, if he manages to get a good kickback, they're not going in. They're going in. They are going in. Oh, but Wicked flashes. That was a perfectly timed flash. Has caused Cyanide to take a good few turret hits as well. Split second reaction, Cyanide almost getting in behind him. Yeah, and he manages to get away. Now Froggen is going to go in on Peke. Yeah, throws the barrel out. That's a great body slam. Shockwave comes back from Peke. Who's got the damage? Another barrel will land. The Grand Skyfall is available, but will Shook risk this one? We can see that Peke is actually taking a different route here to just get away from it. In fact, he's just going to farm up Wolves. So at the end of the day, they trade ultimates, but I think it's more impressive that Froggen is the one making those moves. He's jumping in first and trying to set something up. Shook has snuck himself down to this bottom lane, trying to maybe set up a kill. And I don't know if you've noticed, but... Oh, now Cyanide's caught! Wow. That belly is slamming pretty hard. Uh, but yeah, I think you were going to touch on the fact that the Athene's Unholy Grail was finished off there by Frog and slightly ahead on item build. Maybe why he felt, you know what, I'm stronger now, let's go for it. Yeah, it didn't work out. We actually see Shook coming in for the Wraith Camp. One Cyanide. Wow, Cyanide forced to flash as well from this one. And this is the danger of this comp. Alliance, uh, sorry, Fnatic flashing all over the place. As we are going to see Reckless caught in a little bit of trouble. Exhaust goes down. There's the hook on towards Tabs. Everyone's low in that lane. Nif actually the healthiest amongst them. Well, here comes Gragas down to the bottom lane. Is he going to be able to get in there? No he cost. doesn't quite have his barrel ready here for this one. He slides in. Good damage onto Yellow Star. Will flay back. Ultimate is available. And he there it is. Froggen takes down Yellow Star. Reckless takes a blast. They back off. But now Peke is coming down to this bottom lane. They've got minions, so no need to tank the turret. And Peke not going to have enough there to be picking off a kill. Just in time. Froggen manages to get that explosive cast. They get the flashes out of both Reckless and Yellow Star. They pick up a kill onto Yellow Star. And by time the culling and the solar flares available for Alliance, they can just rinse and repeat. We talked about how once Leona gets six, she's capable of shutting down Thresh, and it seems to work out. So is going in on Wicked. 
Yeah, good damage onto him as well. We can see that Spectre's Cowl actually built there by Wicked. And we've seen most Tronals going for that Blade of the Rune King at the very start of things to get that sustain, to be feeling a little bit more confident in a 1v1 scenario. But we already see how much damage Soaz can do. And maybe even more importantly, he can keep his distance from Wicked the entire time. Yeah, we've been seeing the Blade of the Rune King when it's been Trundle versus Bruises, yeah. when it works against champions that stack out HP. I think rushing a Spirit Visage versus a, uh, uh, an AP top is a smart decision, but Soez has already sort of countered that by going Morella Nomicon. Once Soez bursts Wicked down low enough, it's going to reduce the effectiveness of all of his heals from his Spirit Visage, from his Subjugate, from the, the Frozen Domain, his W. So Soez has more kill potential with the itemization. I think it's smart. Cyanide's going to try to set something up again. It didn't work last time, though. Didn't work last time, but that's because Wicked flashed away from it. Doesn't have his flash available now. Here comes Cyanide. He missed the Q. <laughs> that could have been very different if the Q would have landed. However, he's forced Wicked away nonetheless. There's going to be some decent turret damage with another wave coming in. Fnatic might be able to put some good damage down on top. Oh, Peke again taking a big blast. Here comes the Grand Skyfall. Peke not going to be caught inside it, but the air is a stun. The barrel will knock him away though. Peke out of danger. Flash for flash, and Alliance have been keeping Peke playing defensively. Yes, they've got one kill on him, but they haven't necessarily slowed down his farm. He is still staying as powerful as Froggen. This tower is most likely going to go down now, and Cyanide cannot really pick this fight. So advantage Alliance, they've got the first dragon, they've got the first tower, and I would say all of the ganks in this mid lane have succeeded for sure. We asked questions, can he step up? And so far, he has. Not only that, the top lane turret didn't go down. Wicked's teleport had come off cooldown, so he got there before that turret did fall. However, Dragon's up, and Wicked won't have teleport if something happens down there. Fnatic have already got themselves in position. What I like from Wicked, though, is he's still pushing the top lane. He's trying to get some sort of advantage. Keep in mind, there's no Grand Skyfall either. So Fnatic have got all five members of their team there. Shook is a mile away. Alliance should just back away. Frogger should not be in range of even getting caught out, and I think they realize that as well. Fnatic even up the dragons to go one to one. On one in dragons. Let's have a look at that top turret though. See how Wicked's doing up there and well, can jump down onto that one. And to be honest, if you look at the mini map, I think Wicked will be able to have this one away. Although the minions slowly but surely being taken down by that turret. It's gonna be close. He's gonna have to tank up a couple of hits, but he will be able to finish it off. That's 2-0 in turrets. A good reply on the dragon take that Fnatic just took. I almost prefer the fact that Alliance got the tower. Knowing that that's not there, and now allows Shook to even come in from behind, from the blue buff onto Soez. If Soez continues to stay pushing the wave up or remains in the top half of the map, the kill potential from Wicked and Shook is going to be much greater. Plus, Frogging can sneak in a little bit more. So, very good decision making. Shook and Wicked may try to double team Soez, and Shook is looking for an engage. No Skyfall. Oh, well, look at that. Soez going in on towards Shook and saying. You can jump at me, but actually, I've got more damage than both of you right now. So, Shook decides, you know what? You're right about that one. He backs away from it. There is a dive in again from Soaz. And again, Cyanide waits, but a Wicked Flash is available. Yeah, they may just want to try force Wicked back for the tower. They're going to jump on a Wicked. Well, may or may not. They're going to go in onto him. The stun actually comes down. There's the kick. Wicked does flash there, and Cyanide taking tons of turret damage. Minions are going to time out. Here comes the Grand Skyfall. He's going to put the pillar in place. They end up losing one, and I have to wonder if they can finish off Soaz here. He, he can. Great play by Shook. And now Soaz is wholly out of position. There's not really anyone to come in, although we did see Froggen, or didn't see Froggen take down Peke in the middle lane, one versus one. But Cyanide is now running for his life. He's going to try the recall and he's going to get away with it. Yeah, he's going to make his way out, but that was a very good reaction from Shook. The fact that he's got so much damage, he jumped onto LeBlanc with no mana. And I talked about how Froggen and Peke would most likely not get kills 1v1, but look at the damage difference. Froggen has gone for a needlessly large rod, plus that blasting one. I think this is just going to be a wombo combo. Flash body slam, connected with every single barrel, and even five ca or three caster minions helping out. One lost barrel. That was just outplay, straight outplay by Froggen. Doing incredibly well. I'll happily stand corrected on the fact that I didn't think one versus one they were going to go at it. But you know, two zero one now. 
is Frog and has that slightly uh, CS lead in the lane. Almost got his death cap completed. Now this bottom lane, despite that early kill, being fairly quiet. However, Soas is now waiting behind the turret. He can make up big ground with this LeBlanc. Yeah, and he's already got the makings of that DFG, so there's a lot of ability power. 254 to be added in. If they manage to get on tabs, it's going to be the target they want. Grand Skyfall's not available for Shook, but you can see him and Frog and trying to move down. The roaming and the rotations that Alliance have not been really stellar at seem to be a little bit improved, but they can't get caught. Yellow Star's aware of it. That was a great ward from the double golems. Yeah, they were doing a lot of pinging onto that position. There is a flash in the hook. Wow. wow. A flash of nothing really from Yellow Star. You see his player cam there shaking his head. That was not as intended from him. A hook and the box actually landing might have meant trouble for Nif. As it was, a lot used. In fact, everything used from Yellow Star. That, almost, that could have even been worse. I actually think if Yellowstar connected, Grand Skyfall was available, Alliance may have even been able to respond to it. But unfortunately for Yellowstar, it means ultimate and the flash is not there. That initiation power from Thresh is not available. They've caught Shook out. The rest of Fnatic are in place, but Alliance have four stacked. Yeah, Tabs is actually going to finish off the bottom turret here. And it looks like Alliance are going to try and make a run from it. Or are they going to wait around here? Do they want to try and steal this red buff? It will in the end be smited away by Cyanide. So that remains Fnatic. Alliance backed off, but they've picked up the final outer turret that was left standing for Fnatic. So once again, tower advantage or objective advantage is sitting with Alliance. The fact that they had two sweepers on their side, and I think the, I think a little bit of, of, of bravery from Alliance. They invaded, they cleared some of Fnatic's wards, and they wanted a challenge for red, but they weren't stacked up tightly enough. They had three members sort of dilly-dallying around red. You've seen Tabs was a little bit away, so... Unfortunately, by the time he would have got in range, would have been in trouble. I want to point out that Tabs has already got himself a Spectre's Cowl. Against the double AP, he's gone for a defensive item first, and I think that's a very smart decision, because if he can survive some of the burst, he's going to allow himself to lifesteal back during the course of a fight with that Bloodthirster. And they've done incredibly well to get him ahead in CS again. 196 to 189. He was double the CS behind that of Reckless a little bit earlier on in this game. Wicked. Well, in this top lane, he's had pressure the entire game. Cyanide spent a lot of time in there. They've been trying to get that lip long roll in, but honestly, 0 1 1 4 Soaz obviously he is still going to be able to do a lot of damage going forward, especially once that DFG gets finished off. I'm interested to see how that all develops here. Again, the double AP come from Fnatic, leaving, I think, a lot to be desired so there's, far. There's a scary fact that Fnatic have to play with the Golem doesn't get, or the Wraith doesn't get sent away. I think if, if Soaz doesn't kill either. Pantheon, Gregor's Lucian instantly. I think Alliance overall have more sustained damage. LeBlanc is burst only, she needs her spells. Oriana has a lot of sustain, can constantly cost, but it, there'll be seconds of safety, so to speak. And, you know, Caitlyn is some good DPS, but in general, I feel like Alliance will do better in a sustained fight. So as long as they don't get burst out instantly, team fight should actually be in favor of Alliance right now. Fnatic are trying to play the reactionary death bush that we keep seeing from them, but I'm not expecting Tabs and Nif to carry on pushing without vision. Now, so I said to us last week that Fnatic's play style is to be playing the pick game, to be getting people one by one, catching them out of position. You can see that Alliance already moving in wards over the back of the Dragon Pit, and rightly so. That's up in three seconds. They're in position for it. Fnatic are kind of closing in on this one, though. It could be interesting, but I think it's down too quick. Yeah, they're too slow. Alliance are going to be able to get this one before Fnatic to come in. Cyanide doesn't steal it. Yeah, Cyanide is in there. Has to flash away. Froggen's around the back. Cyanide here. Hit by a lot of damage. Shockwave. There's pretty much nothing. It only pulled Nip in. The box has gone down, but they've locked them up. That's a double kill. As Soas goes in towards Froggen, does manage to pick himself up the kill and backs away towards the bottom lane. So in the end, a two for one. The jungler, the support down for Fnatic. Alliance lost their mid laner, but they got the dragon. Yeah, so Alliance once again with a great play. Wicked teleports in from the top of the fight. He was able to zone pick out completely. Reckless was a non-factor. He wasn't involved. And what I like from Alliance is they jumped over that wall instantly. They were not afraid to engage. So as in Wicked are now just trading lanes to battle, and Wicked is even feeling brave enough to go forward. Forcing Soas to use his ultimate, mimicking that distortion and get even more distance away. Forcing him away, and he's got that Cutlass now added in. Spirit Visage of his was finished earlier on, so Wicked's starting to feel more confident on the troll right now. He is ahead in CS, not got the kill in there that Soas has from earlier on. And another thing to mention, Banshee's Veil is done here by Tabs. That's going to stop one chunk of the burst from Soas. That's going to stop Lee Sin connecting onto him with the Q. That's going to stop Peke 
getting the shockwave off onto him, or yellow star hooking him. There's so many different options that that Banshee's Veil just cancels out. Yeah, I'm so happy with the itemization from Tabs. He's slowed down the damage he can deal because the rest of his team has damage. He doesn't necessarily need to be the only one, and it's allowing him to be more uh, survivable in his team fights. The other thing is that yellow star rushed a ruby sidestone very early on from what we're used to seeing. You do see So is caught a little bit by Wicked. So is now only the 1,300 HP. He can't deal with the sustained threat that Wicked has because he knows if Soez goes for an all-out burst, Subjugate will mitigate it. Look at Fnatic here having to defend that inner turret in the mid lane. Wicked, They've got Wicked. could get slowed down. Actually, he's going to get changed up. Stun comes in. There's the shockwave. They're throwing everything at Wicked, but the Grand Skyfall going to come in the back. Wicked finally will fall to Reckless, but the rest of Alliance are now here. Can they do the damage, though? Cyanide's low. They've finally, finally picked off one. So as in Cyanide are now down. As Froggen will get that kill on Cyanide. Have they got enough for Yellow Star? No. Get speeded up there by Peke. So that was a two for two. Top laners and junglers going down but that turret is going to go to a lines as well i highlighted this a little bit earlier where yellow star flashed for the hook and failed it if he had connected i think the same thing would have happened you've seen shook coming down with that grand skyfall you see the solar flare locking Fnatic up and even though it was wicked that was caught out they get two kills out of it for losing to both the top and junglers and they get their fourth tower of the game completely uh, advantageous for alliance they would take that trade i think any day of the week 5,000 gold ahead as well, 25 minutes in, that is not a small chunk of gold at this point. One question that I have, we were talking about calls, rotations, the general team play coming out of Alliance. They've certainly been a lot better here, but it comes the next question when you look at they're ahead in this one by quite a margin. Can they close out games? I think they have a great composition to close the game out. Because under a siege situation, Gragas is going to deal a lot of damage on the tower. If Lucian gets in range, once he gets the Trinity Force in the next few minutes, he's also going to be able to shred towers very quickly. So the potential is great. Now Nip is caught. And he is caught from this, and I don't think he's getting away from it either. Cyanide getting in there. They're actually using a lot on him there. And now Wicked is pushing in. Soas takes a lot of damage. Frogan coming across. And in the end, they will be able to back off a nice one for nothing pick for a Fnatic. Uh, and I wouldn't have expected that to happen. That was very deep into Alliance territory. Fnatic playing the, their vision better, I think is the word I'm looking for. They've got a ring of wards in and around Baron and going deep into Alliance's territory. So they knew they could walk up. They knew there was no one to challenge them. And I think Nif was actually just trying to ward up himself. He's just trying to go into, into his jungle and clear it out. Alliance have two sweeping lenses and there's a lot of wards to clear out. I think they should maybe even pick up a third one on Wicked because Wicked playing the split push game, you can deny some of the vision and maybe play it a little safer as well. No pink wards and then Fnatic do have one in their inventory here with Yellow Star. So we'll see if that one actually goes down over by Baron. Maintain control of that one. Currently Tabs is up on the top lane just farming himself up. Is still ahead of Reckless despite that early game disparity that he really did well to bring back. We've got one and a half minutes until the Dragon comes into play as well from this one. Alliance have done well to control it for the last couple of spawns coming in. Who's is it this time around though? Fnatic seem like they want to pick, but I'm not sure that they want to go full on team fight. I don't think Fnatic can win a 5v5. Their team comp is, is simply not suited to it. Yes, they have mobility, they can sort of kite a little bit, but if they get caught by even the slightest bit of CC of the Trundle Pillow or Leona Slows or Snares, th they're just going to get killed very quickly. Fnatic need to find a pick. They need to kill somebody on the sideline and then re-engage. So we'll see how Soez positions himself in and around the Dragon Pit and if he can try find kills. I also want to highlight the fact that Nif is going for most likely that Locket of the Iron Solari as well, which is an item that we don't see very often. You know, since it got changed from last year to this year, it's not super popular. But against a burst composition of double AP, it's arguably the best item you can pick up. All of Fnatic now may get caught out by Alliance. Alliance have a little bit more vision. They're trying to find members of Fnatic and Fnatic on the way out. They get out cleanly. Fnatic getting the zoning power in there of the Orianna as well. You see the Alliance starting to get themselves the back Grand in. Skyfall. Here comes the Grand Skyfall. Are they going to be able to catch anyone? They go on towards X Peke. The barrel will knock Soez back. Didn't quite finish him off, but the rest of the team may be able to here. We see that Shook already down. Cyanide will fall, but it's a double kill for Reckless. He's gone untouched through this fight. It's now a two for one, but Alliance, they're not done here. They feel with Tabs and Froggen that they've got the damage to finish it off. There's another pillar. A good play back, but the body slam will hammer them down. Two more kills coming in. Reckless still alive, and in the end, a three for two in favor of 
<laughs> it's not oh, Lions, but... it's not over because Soas is coming there. Time to slow down. Can Reckless finish him off? Wicked's gonna speed them all up. I think they might be able to escape from this one. The barrel and the pillar will definitely make sure that happens. A chaotic fight there in mid lane. Very chaotic. Alliance come out a little bit ahead with that additional kill. I think they misplayed their ultimates a little bit there. The Gragas uh, uh, explosive cast knocked Soez to safety without actually killing him. So he was able to come back to the fight and help defend against the tower. Crucially, neither Tabs nor Reckless were touched during the course of that fight. So they were able to just lay so much damage down. Soez might catch Shook. We'll see if he goes in. Ooh. Oh, so I was thinking I might get caught out from that one. Actually, he has to get himself straight out of there, even using his ultimate, which obviously on a terribly short cooldown and getting that double range for him to escape from. So, Dragon is up and available. So, as is still on that bottom side, the bottom sorry, almost going down to the minions there. Tab's just saving that one as he comes in with the Lucian. But Dragon started off here for Alliance. So as is waiting in the back, they know he's there, there's a ward on top of him. With the exception of the box, basically every ultimate is available now for these teams. Alliance try to force that fight because of how strong they are in a 5v5 situation. They try to go in, gonna catch Wicked, he's gonna insta-flash. Insta-flash away from that one, he's, he's been on his reactions in that one, I'm not gonna give it, say anything about that one as the Dragon did go down there for Alliance, and here comes the Grand Skyfall, he's going onto the top side, there's a great ulti coming out of Nip and Expecte destroyed at the start of that fight. That's a pick back for Alliance. Will they be able to go for any more? Are they going to start to siege a little bit further down the map or even go Baron? Yeah, with Explosive Cask is still available here for Froggen. If Alliance start the Baron off, they need to ensure they peel away and pick the fight when Fnatic comes to challenge. They don't have a Sweeper just yet. Oh, they do use uh, a pink, I believe. Not sure how they got rid of that ward, but nevertheless, it has been denied. You see, Fnatic, they want to try and interrupt Baron, and I think Alliance are smart not to, to rush Baron down. They don't want to run the risk of it being stolen or losing players to Lee Sin LeBlanc combo. Smart call by Alliance to use it as bait, but not actually commit to it, which we've seen many teams losing games for in the past. Yeah, top lane was also heavily pushed. Froggen decided to go up there and clear that one out, giving him a good chunk of farm. He's probably 30 CS ahead that of Xpeke, and more importantly, 4-1-6 compared to the 1-4-5 that Xpeke has been on. And to be honest, he's been hammered down so quickly in these team fights. We saw it in the last one. He could hardly blink before he went down. Yeah, and Yellowstar threw the Dark Passage into the team. Cyanide and Xpeke were standing next to it, basically saying, who should go, who should grab it? And whoever grabbed it could potentially have gotten out. But with the single target stuns and, and lock up that Alliance offer, if they do catch you, if they do get a Leona or a Trundle onto you, you are most likely going to get caught out and die. And I think Alliance, once again, they are forcing these fights. They're forcing the 5v5s because their composition does better at it. And with Shook grab grabbing himself a Warmogs now as well, he's going to be able to survive the burst that Fnatic are putting out when he engages in those fights. You see that Nif now with that Locket also in there going onto the Talisman, which against a team that's got so much mobility on them is going to help so much coming into these fights. We actually already have that over on the Fnatic side, so it'll be interesting to see how Chase has really developed through that one. Interestingly, even though Alliance are ahead, they've got a 7,000, 8,000 gold lead, they've up on towers, they're up on dragons. You almost feel like Alliance are forcing fights. They don't have a clear way to engage, even though, yes, Leona is just solar flare and you go in. If that doesn't catch the, the mobile members of Fnatic, there's nothing more that they can offer. So they're, they're trying to force these grand skyfalls to work for them. Whereas when we watch Rocket play Pantheon against Fnatic, they would allow the rest of the team to engage and grand skyfalls to follow up to chase them down. So we'll see how Alliance plays these next few minutes because I kind of feel like those fights are almost desperate, but it's, it's a bit of a harsh word. So the ace in the hole coming through there, nicely blocked out by Nif Soaz. Getting close, but doesn't want to risk things. Cyanide actually was forced to back away there with the safeguard as well. And we play this game continuously here. The ward coverage being battled over on the dragon, uh, sorry, on the barren side of the map here. There's actually one still on the corner there, but again, Alliance have weeded out quite nicely. Going to head to the barren pit themselves. They don't have a pink ward to actually put down there, but they're fine with starting off. They have 
the ability to scan the pit. Fnatic are coming though. Yeah, the vision is in favor of Alliance. They've used those sweeping. They've got Cyanide! Oh, and that's a big burst onto him. Will they be able to keep him away though to go for the steal? Baron is down to half HP. We still see Frogger waiting at the backside. He throws in the barrel to get the kill. Grand Skyfall comes into the Baron pit itself. And there is a shockwave coming down. Didn't really do anything. Alliance are going to pick up the Baron. Yellow Star's trying to escape from this one, but Alliance are chasing them down as Peke gets stunned up. Can they chase through from this one? This is where the talisman would have really come in handy for them. Fnatic get away, losing just the one man, but the Baron was picked up by Alliance. Alliance can carry on sieging if they want to. They know there's no Shockwave available, and without having Lee Sin there, the, the threat of losing your AD carry to a kickback is going to be mitigated. The one thing that I think Alliance did a little bit a little bit overzealous there is Shook actually flashed over the wall to try and kill Cyanide. He had his Skyfall to go back in the pit, but a little bit of miscommunication as Froggen just blew him up with that explosive cask. And talking about Froggen, he's grabbed himself a Guardian's Angel. Alliance are going to siege there on the bottom inhibitor, uh, bottom inner turret, and Fnatic can do nothing to stop that going down. No, nothing whatsoever. The pillar came down. We've also got a War Mox here on Shook, so and we went in there for a bit of damage. He's now nice and tanky, and that's going to allow him a little bit more freedom when he jumps in there, not to get instantly popped down by them. And also got decent damage in there with his Brutalizer as well. So Alliance very much in the driving seat in this game. 13 to 8 up in kills. More importantly, 5-1 in turrets and that Baron buff picked up on its last bomb. We're going to have a Dragon coming up here in a minute as well. We'll see if Fnatic are feeling any kind of confidence in terms of challenging for that one, but I think it might just be more free gold for Alliance. I think Alliance can teach a lot of teams how to play in that Baron pit. The two times they've gone there, they've used it a bait. Pulled out the first time. Second time, Froggen was sitting around the side expecting Sinai to come in from his side of the jungle, so he was zoning correctly. And if you've got vision control, you need to force the jungler away. Do not let him get in smite range, and that is exactly what Froggen did. Now with the Baron buff up, teleport available on Wicked. A four-man alliance are trying to siege this inhibitor turret. Kalin goes down, and not really to great effect, but that's 30% of the HP in the turret already taken away. Yeah, and the fact is Wicked's now coming in. Obviously went more than Magic Resist route early on, laning in against Soas. Blade of the Ruin King came second. He's going to have a Sunfire Cape in a while, which means that he can stand under those turrets even more effectively and tank things up for them. Right now, though, Alliance keeping them back. Yeah, Alliance have got better. They've got Peke! They've got Peke! They're going to go all in! He's dead! Nothing to offer up in this fight. Alliance now going to go straight towards that inhibitor. Cyanide getting caught out. A good hook from Yellow Star will keep him alive. Well, the, uh, the inhibitor does go down. That was finished off by Tads. One kill for nothing, but Alliance got the turret and the in him. Solar Flare landing bang on Peke's head. Even though his flash, uh, he's got distortion boots, his flash was not available. And that's the only real way the Alliance have to initiate right now. Catch somebody out with Leona or the Trundle and then just pop them. And that is exactly what they did. Culling once again used to zone Fnatic away and Alliance won another inhibitor turret. Such a great zone in Team Tabs. They're actually going to get hooked on. Box goes down. Cyanide was in there but nipped up right into the middle of them. Wicked coming across the side as well. They need to get away with this tanking uh, Nif and he went very low. The inhibitor though is going to start to be focused down here. I don't think Fnatic can do anything about that one. Alliance will get it. The second one of the game and back off. Even with Tabs getting caught by a perfect death sentence, Fnatic could not string enough damage together to pick up a kill. Largely in, uh, in part because of Nif landing a great stun, throwing himself in there, interrupting Fnatic and preventing them sticking to Tabs. But a great play by Alliance. They've got two inhibitors, grab themselves another dragon. They've got a 12,000 gold lead. And there's very little that Fnatic can do right now to pull themselves back into this game. Yeah, the problem is that they can't hold on to turrets and inhibitors. The fact that the barrels roll in there, the culling, and then you've got the option of that trundle throwing his pillar down right in the backside to catch someone out to make it even easier for Nif with the slow to land his combo in there as well. Just to quickly touch on the items again, Guardian Angel is now there for Wicked, so he's even more confident of diving straight into that backside of things. I thought with the Giant's Belt Chain Vest that he was actually going to go some fire cape in the end, went for that Guardian Angel and has that Giant's Belt as well. On the other side, look at Frog and Scragas with that GA from earlier, also now adding in another needlessly large rod and the Void Staff. The AD carries another uh, BF Sword added in to what's already the Bloodthirst of Trinity Force. Last Whisper there, four tabs. Fnatic needed to get further ahead in the laning phase. For their competitions, their composition to have beaten Alliance, they needed to win 
and smash Alliance in the laning phase, and they didn't. Alliance held completely even. Now, with super minions in the middle and bottom lane, Alliance are just gonna siege up in this top lane, wait for the minion to become a threat for Fnatic, and potentially just tower dive. They've got so much armor, so many lives to revive and come back into this fight. Alliance can throw themselves at Fnatic under the tower. So as let's avoid the damage of that uh, barrel from Gragas, but I think it's, it's, it's really just a matter of time before Alliance decide to jump in. Learning a little bit from Gambit here, stacking in those Banshees and Cardian Angels as we saw from them last week. At the moment, Alliance are going to be moving towards the turret and they are going to do good damage. Cyanide actually went into the middle and Wicked took a lot of damage from that one and it looks like Fnatic may hold on to the turret at least for now, but the fact is, they're just going to keep coming back at them. We've got Baron in one and a half minutes. Cyanide again getting forward. The ball is in the middle of the team, but will they throw that shockwave down? Will they be able to catch men out? Wicked there just came to meet shield anything that was going to come over onto his teammates. And to be honest, the turret wave by wave is going further and further towards zero. And there's some good wave clear by Fnatic, but it's really just delaying the inevitable here. Super minions are now on the Nexus turrets, and it's actually Yellow Star that's fallen back to try and defend with Reckless. This is a potential 5v3 if Alliance decided to go in. Wicked, it's a decent enough uh, pillar down, but it's not enough yet. Alliance playing, I actually think, fairly safely here. They don't want to throw away a lead. And of course, with all those traps and the burst potential, it is a little safe, but I think it really is just a ticking time bomb here for Fnatic. Shook and Wicked, the ones that will stand on those traps to make the entrance a little bit easier for the team. And Reckless now, after clearing out those super minions, is going to come back to the top side. Brief respite for them as well as the middle inhibitor respawns, but so has Mega caught out. They're going to go in. Tap falling low from this one. He's right in the middle of the team, but he's still alive, crucially. That's a good three man shockwave. But Alliance back away after picking up that first kill. Great play from them once again. 14 seconds to Brown though. Will they risk staying? I feel like it came too late. I think Alliance decided to pick a fight maybe a wave or two waves too late. And it means that the middle and bottom inhibitors have respawned now for Fnatic. This one will be in the next you know, 30 seconds or so. No super minions pushing the waves and Fnatic have held on. They even defended that turret. So pretty well played and I think Maybe too much hesitation from Alliance. They are going to pick up this Baron uncontested though. So I can't really fault them too much because they're going to spend their money, go back to the top lane or potentially even the middle and bottoms and just go for those exposed inhibitors. Yeah, and the gold that they're carrying back with them right now after all those pickups with the Baron as well is pretty significant. Two, four, uh, I was actually in there for Shook and lots of items being picked up to be honest. We've seen the Randuins now finished. There's a Bloodthirster number two being added in here for tabs as well. So quite frankly, they're coming back with even more power, not just item wise, but the Baron buff on as well. Fnatic have got two and almost a third exposed inhibitor. That turret on the top lane is very, very low. You have to wonder if this is a matter of time and quite frankly, how Fnatic can possibly hold on here. I don't believe that they can with the amount of defensive statistics and the number of times they have to kill people on Alliance's side and the 15k goal difference. I think Alliance have got the pick of the litter right now when it comes to fighting. They've caught Froggen. I mean, Froggen was basically alone. There was multiple members of Alliance lagging behind and nobody from Fnatic jumped in. To be fair, neither Soares or Pekka were super close. We do see another chain going down. Alliance, they've just brute forced their way in. This inhibitor's gonna drop. Wicked is going very, very low. Yeah, actually, he's gonna get his Guardian Angel popped here from this one, but we do see them going in. Oh, no, Reckless caught out of the back. He's gonna get shut down. The Grand Skyfall comes in. That's a good kickback from Cyanide, but it won't uh, save his life. Soares is gonna be focused down as well. Yellow Star falling low. That's a great pillar from Wicked, but I don't think they can keep, uh, keep going from that one. They won this inhibitor are on the bottom lane. They're going to be regening, uh, regening from the Baron. Can they keep going here? Yeah, I think they may even be able to finish. If this mini wave goes down, Alliance have set their sights on the top tower, though. They want to get three waves of super minions spawning. A little undecided, actually, about what they want to do. Teleport from Wicked after he's come back in and going to try zone out. And this is the decision from Alliance. They want the inhibitors. Wicked is just running interference. Home guards from Wicked got him up to that turret. Runs the interference. Turret goes down. Inhibitor goes down. No inhibitor left here now for Fnatic. Are they on the verge? Well, they are on the verge of their second loss. Let's not sugarcoat this one. This is a massive lead for Alliance. Ulti's coming out left and right as they go in towards him. Peke there. Nif really keeping him out of the fight as the Nexus turrets get focused. The first and the second now already down. And the Nexus itself gets finished off. Alliance pick up a massive win against the league leaders.
first against eighth place. You guys at home said 90% chance that Fnatic win this one. Alliance going against all the odds to pick up a great win. And every single member of Alliance stepped up there. You cannot fault an individual play. They held even in lanes when they should have been falling further behind. Frog and 1v1ing Peke with that Gragas versus Orianna. And that is a very, very serious look on the face of x But truthfully, truthfully, it was all about Alliance. They outplayed Fnatic, I would dare say, at every stage. If you think back to how Gambit did it against them, lots of GAs, lots of, lots of Banshees fails to stop that double AP burst that was coming out from Fnatic in their first loss of the season. Alliance weren't too far away from that one either. We had GAs left and right. We had the Banshees fail extremely early from Tabs. I want to point that out specifically because he ended the game 5-0-7. Despite being caught out a little bit on that top side there on the final